All right, I want to talk to you today about the coming satanic trinity. I'm going to show you what the Bible has to say about this very important subject. And this is not my creation. This is not some new kind of a teaching. I'm going to show you here in this book right there. This idea of a coming satanic trinity was written about 100 years ago in the year 1920. This book was originally published in 1918 and then again revised and updated this edition here, in other words, in 1920. So Clarence Larkin brought this thing out uh, 100 years ago. But right here we have the Satanic Trinity. There it is. I'm going to read this, at least part of it. The Satanic, satanic Trinity, the members of it are the dragon, the anti-god, the beast, the antichrist, the false prophet, the anti-spirit. Okay. To show you that down there at the bottom of the page right there you can see the page number right here is the quote i'm going to read another paragraph here um okay it says here this is page 124 he says in the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, we have the satanic trinity, Satan's imitation of the divine trinity. Uh, no, I don't think so. There is no divine trinity in Scripture. Uh, Clarence Larkin had a lot of issues, by the way. I'm not recommending this book. This book has far too many issues in it for me to recommend it. Dispensationally, he gets a lot of the stuff right, but he quotes the revised version. There's a bunch of other things he does. I don't recommend this book to a Bible-believing Christian. And saying it's, you know, Satan's imitation of the divine trinity. There is no divine trinity. Okay? There is no trinity. More on that as we continue through the study. In the unseen and invisible dragon, we have the father, the anti-god. In the beast, we have the son of perdition, the antichrist, begotten of the dragon, who appears on the earth, dies, and is resurrected, and to whom is given a throne by his father, the dragon. In the false prophet, we have the anti-spirit, who proceeds from the dragon's father, and dragon's son, and whose speech is like the dragon's. The dragon then will be the anti-god, the beast, the anti-Christ, and the false prophet, the anti-spirit. And the fact that all three are cast alive into the lake of fire, Revelation chapter 20, verse 10, is proof that they together form a triumvirate, which we may call the satanic trinity. Okay, and let me show you the, the quote here. Uh, right there, this paragraph right here. You can pause it and read it from here and down to there. There you go. Okay. Written 100 years ago. So don't say that Brian Denninger just created a new doctrine in his anti-Trinitarian fervor and whatever else. Uh, no, I didn't write that. I'm not that old. Here we have The Mark of the Beast by Peter Ruckman. Okay. It says here, um, no mistake must be made, this is page 85, no mistake must be made at this point on identity. Judas would certainly never reveal himself as Judas. Okay, the teaching here is, Larkin said it, Ruckman also taught this, that Judas Iscariot, he comes back, it says that he went to his own place in the Bible uh, when he, you know, committed suicide. And the teaching is that Judas Iscariot comes back as the son of perdition. Right, because he's a devil. Jesus Christ said, one of you is a devil. Have, an, have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil. All right. Judas Iscariot was not a man in the sense that we think of here. So the teaching is that Judas Iscariot comes back, the spirit that was in Judas Iscariot, that devil spirit comes back and becomes the Antichrist. Interesting theory. But he doesn't come back and say, hey, I'm Judas Iscariot. The Antichrist reveals himself as Jesus Christ and then as God himself, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. The spirit is Judas's, Balaam. The body is a pope's, Balak. And the soul is Satan's, Baal. Okay, so Ruckman says that the spirit is, you know, Judas. The body is the pope. And the soul is Satan. Okay. Now, none of us can really be totally sure about how that they're going to work it out. Body, soul, spirit. Um, which one is going to be, represent who? But... Uh, but it says here, this incarnate trinity of hell will usurp all three offices of the Lord, King, Jesus, 
uh, Lord, King, Jesus, Prophet, Christ, Priest. He will be the prophet, priest, and king of the last, final, and all-out effort to overthrow the Word of God. He will appear at Rome as a pope for three and a half years, being on good terms with the Jew, and then he will break his promises and submit uh, and summit conference resolutions and attack Jerusalem to enthrone himself as the true God, which I think is pretty accurate. But let me just show you the quotes here, just so you can see I'm not making it up. This is page 85, down there at the bottom. Okay, next page. Up here at the top of page 86. Right there, you can read that. And here he has a little drawing of um, three-dimensional television, which he, he wrote this book, by the way, back in, um, let me see what is the copyright date on this thing. Uh... 1960 copyright of 1960 and he's saying 3d holograms and right now out in las vegas they have 3d holograms of a lot of the singers and things like that that guys that are dead so apparently not too far off in his prediction here peter ruckman but you get this family and the image of the beast in there and whatever else I find that very interesting but then another one here that he has, page 120, he has this picture, Inspiration, the greatest lover, artist, poet, musician, genius, pope, and scientist of all time, His Majesty, the Devil. All right, right there you go. The popular depiction of what most people think Jesus Christ looked like is in reality what the Antichrist is going to appear as, and I believe that is very true. And my issue with Peter Ruckman is he'd say this, and draw the guy as this is going to be what the Antichrist looks like. But then he shows this same guy drawn dying on the cross for your sins. Ruckman wasn't perfect. The King James Bible is perfect. Peter Ruckman wasn't. The King James Bible perfect is perfect and I'm not perfect. Okay. Don't ever put your faith in men. All right. So there you have two different sources long before I came up with this sermon. So don't say this is all Denlinger's teaching. This is just him and his crazy wingnut theories and whatever else. Uh, Clarence Larkin, 1920. Peter Ruckman, 1960. And here I am, 2020. All right, so but, but let's get into the Bible study now. All right, and I'm going to show you a couple things today and uh, some very shocking things from the scriptures. Turn in your King James Bible to first to Exodus chapter 32. I'm going to show you that the concept of a trinity of three different persons is completely foreign to Scripture. And God never set that thing up. It has been satanic from the very beginning. And a lot of people have believed in it that were saved simply because they got spoiled by philosophy. Exodus chapter 32, verses 1 through 8. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount... The people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods. Lowercase g, but notice it is in the plural. Make us gods. That's going to be important. Remember that. Which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what has become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. For all the people break, and all the people break off the golden earrings, which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a graving tool, after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Plural again, there. But notice it says, after he made it a molten calf. Um, a molten calf is singular but he says these be thy gods plural we'll get back to that verse 5 and when Aaron saw it he built an altar before it and Aaron made proclamation and said tomorrow is a feast to the Lord here's a false molten calf that we call gods and we're going to make a feast to the Lord about this pagan 
system of, of belief, but we're going to use this to celebrate and worship the Lord. Hmm. We'll get back to it. Verse 6, And they rose up early in the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down, for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf, and they worshipped it. A molten calf. They worshipped it, singular, and have sacrificed thereunto, and said, These be thy gods, plural, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. You say, what are you talking about? Well, let me demonstrate. Get a marker out here. Okay. I'll just draw a rough image of a, looks going to probably look more like a horse than, you know, than a calf. Okay. A calf. Okay, one, but it's God's, plural. All right, you with me so far? Well, here you have um, this thing. See if I can draw it. I can never draw this stupid Trinity thing, the Tricatra Trinity deal. Here you have, and it's in the middle, it says God, and here you have at the top, Father, I might have this wrong, I don't really care, to be honest, <laughs> Son, Holy Spirit, okay, and they say, uh, is, is not, is not is not like that it's in the catechism so they say the son is not the father the father is not the holy spirit the son is not the holy spirit okay you got all these is nots going over this way but they're all god all right and what you have is you have god the father okay Number one, that one's in Scripture. No debating that. That one's in Scripture. Number two, we have God the Son, which appears nowhere in Scripture. Number three, we have God the Spirit, or some would say the Holy Spirit. We'll go with Holy Spirit here. So what do we have? Singular God up here. Just one. There's only one God. But one, two, three. And the Trinitarians will protest and they get, they get mad and they cry aloud and cut themselves and all kinds of things like true Baal worshippers. And they'll say, we only believe in one God. We only believe in one God. Composed of three gods. It's just a calf. These be thy gods. But it's only one calf. But it's the gods that brought you up out of the land of Egypt. God the Father is not God the Son. God the Son is not God the Holy Spirit, but they're all God. You see, what, what is that? You say, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, because it's a lie. Understand that. This whole Trinitarian system is a lie. There is no scripture for either of these two. These are not in the Bible. God the Father, yes. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, nowhere in Scripture. And you're going to see the importance of this. As we get through the study, you'll see that every single time the Scripture references plural gods, lowercase g, those gods are devils. And this is the very important thing. What were they worshiping over here? Why did God get so angry about the golden calf? Because they were worshiping other gods. What are other gods? Devils. I'm going to show you the scriptures here as we continue in the study. They're worshiping 
devils. What's this down here? There's no scripture for God the Son or God the Holy Spirit. They're worshiping devils. <gasps> oh, oh, blasphemy. No, it's not blasphemy. I'm sticking with the scripture. And I'm going to show you today. I'm going to prove to you. Scripture after scripture after scripture on this issue. Plural gods are always devils in the King James Bible. Let's continue. And I'll show you. Jump down to verse 31 there in Exodus chapter 32. Verse 31. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, O this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. Gods of gold. But no, Moses, you're confused. Moses, you're confused. They only had a golden calf. Just a golden calf. That was it. Why did he say gods of gold? You mean to tell me that there could be a pagan system of belief that would look at one and say it's actually more than one? They're gods, but it's just one. They're gods, but it's just one. Can you read the back there? Can you read English? One Lord. One God, none of this stuff here. God the Father, that's all you have a right to say as a Bible-believing Christian. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, unscriptural. But let's go on to the next scripture. Numbers, go to the book of Numbers. If you're honest and you get through this study and look up all these scriptures, I mean, turn there. Don't just sit there watching this video. Turn in your King James Bible. Make sure that I'm telling you the truth. Make sure that I'm not just giving you a bunch of vain traditions like this junk right here, this satanic junk right here. Make sure that your beliefs are coming from the Bible. Numbers chapter 25. You get through this study, I'm going to convert you to believing in the Godhead and rejecting this satanic stuff right here, this Trinity junk. Numbers chapter 25, verses 1 through 3. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifice of their gods. And the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. Wait a second. They joined to their gods, and yet it's just one name. Baal Peor. Where are the names of the other gods? Join themselves under their gods. But it's just one name. Three gods, or however many, but it's just one name. There are three, but it's just one. You see? We can't support this down here with Scripture, but... And this isn't here in Scripture anywhere. I mean, where does the Bible ever say that the Son is not the Father? Or the Father is not the Holy Spirit? Or the Son is not the, the, the Holy Spirit? Where does the Bible say that? Where's the Scripture for this? Oh, and I thought the Bible said we're not supposed to make a graven image. A graven image that comes out the same as the witchcraft trinity. Although, you mean witches have a trinity? Yes, they do. A trichetra. Hmm. Or I guess if you're scholarly, you say a tricetra. Remember James White said that? Uh, tricetra. Oh. oh, okay, wow. Just forget any, you know, it, it makes everything I said invalid, you know, because I said tricetra rather than tricetra. Scholarly people crack me up. Next, go to Deuteronomy chapter 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13. And verse 6 is where we're going to begin. If thy brother, thy, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth, 
Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shalt thine eye pity him, neither shalt thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal him, but thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people. And thou shalt stone him with stones that he die, because he hath sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God. One Lord, just one. Jesus is the just one, by the way, too, interestingly. Which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. No, 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 no. It wasn't the Lord that brought them out of Egypt. These be thy gods, O children of Israel. And you read the story back there, by the way, in Exodus. What does the Lord do to those people that were worshiping a calf and calling it gods? He killed them. He slaughtered them. And here is a law given saying, you start saying that you worship gods, kill that person. You hear it? And you notice, notice the list. Back there in verse 6, thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend. Your best friend. Hey, you know, I believe in the gods over here. The Old Testament, you killed them. Your son? Hey, Dad, um, I've been worshiping at the Trinity Baptist Church. Uh, we believe in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But Dad says, come on out back here, son. I'm going to kill you. Uh, is it kind of serious to, to say that there are other gods within the Godhead? Yeah. Lord doesn't like that too much. You know why? Because you introduce one name of God, one more, I'll say, more than just one name of God, you're talking about devils. And you are calling the Godhead devils with your Trinitarian pagan nonsense. Oh, but that's okay. And that's, that's the very heart of Christianity. That's the core teaching of Christianity. You better examine yourself. If you're really falling for the Trinitarian philosophy stuff, okay. I mean, you've been spoiled by philosophy. But if you really believe that stuff and you're not going to repent, you are lost and on your way to hell. You are worshiping devils. You blasphemer. It's, it's always confused me. Why do, why do Trinitarians get so upset when you say Jesus is the Father? He is not the Father. How dare you say... What's the problem? What's the problem? There's a satanic spirit there with, with Trinitarians. And I'm going to show you here, as we talked about at the very beginning, they're preparing to worship one day a physical trinity on the earth. Three different persons. God in three persons. Yeah, that, they're getting ready to worship it. And they want you to fall in line with it. Go next to Deuteronomy chapter 17. Going to be a lot of scriptures in this study. Unlike the Trinitarians. They go to their favorite little texts and whatever else. They won't touch this stuff. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 1 through 5. Thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy God any bullock or sheep wherein is blemish, or any evil favoredness, for that is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. If there be found among you within any of thy, thy gates which the Lord thy God hath given thee, man or woman that hath wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy God in transgressing his covenant, and hath gone and served other gods, and worshipped them, either the sun or moon or any of the host of heaven. God the Son, God the Spirit, they're up in heaven. No, they're not, you blasphemer. They don't exist. Which I have not commanded. And it be told thee, and thou hast heard of it, and inquired diligently, and behold, it is true, and the thing certain, that such abomination is wrought in Israel. Then shalt thou bring forth that man or that woman which have committed that wicked thing unto thy gates, even that man or that woman, and shalt stone them with stones till they die. But God's okay with this. This is equal to Scripture, even though it's not in Scripture. There's plenty of things in Scripture or, that are not in Scripture that we can say it's equal to Scripture. Okay, papists, um, this isn't in Scripture. This is. 
God the Father, absolutely. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, nowhere in Scripture. You're adding to the Scriptures. Trinity, nowhere in Scripture. God doesn't want to have anything connected to his name that says plural gods. Not once. Every time that there's plural gods mentioned in Scripture, it's always a reference to devils. And it was the death penalty in the Old Testament if you messed around with that stuff. Deuteronomy chapter 31. Oh, we, we haven't even warmed up yet. There's a whole lot of stuff in this study. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 16 through 18. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up and go a whoring after the gods, plural, of the strangers of the land, whither they go to be among them, and will forsake me and break my covenant, which I have made with them. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them. Hide his face from them. We'll get back to that. Um, hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us, because our God is not among us? And I will surely hide my face in that day for all the evils which they have wrought, and that they are turned unto other gods. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, those are other gods. There's not one verse of Scripture for that. This is so important to get. Every time you see gods, plural, it's always a reference to devils and false pagan, God, or false pagan idols. Never once are gods, plural, ever a reference to the Lord. And the Trinitarians will say, we don't believe in gods. We only believe in one God, composed of three persons. Oh, okay, so you only believe in one God. So that would mean that the Son is the Father, the Father is the Spirit, the Spirit is the... No, 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 those are separate. They're separate. They're three different gods, but they're only one God. You bunch of liars. There's a place that God made for you. And if you don't repent, you're going to go there. It's called the Lake of Fire. And you deserve it. But you say, what's the deal with the face of God? Okay, you made a big deal of the face of God. I'll hide my face from you. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. Turn there to the New Testament. A little New Testament tie-in here for you. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. This is a good one. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Hey, Israel, if you reject the Lord, he's going to hide his face from you. Um, who does Israel reject? Do they reject the Father? No, they reject Jesus Christ. You say, oh, that's just, they're rejecting Jesus as their Messiah, but they still love God the Father. No, they don't. No, they don't. The face of God the Father is Jesus Christ. How do you know? We just read it. Can you read plain English? The knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. God is the soul. Jesus Christ is the body. When you were looking at the body, Jesus Christ, you were looking at the Father as the soul inside of Jesus Christ. So Israel says, we reject Jesus Christ, but we'll take the Father. And the Lord says, uh-uh, no. I'm going to hide my face from you. What is the spirit that God has given the nation of Israel according to Romans chapter 11? blindness. They can't see his face. Moses goes up to the mountain and he comes back down and he has the glory of God shining basically off of him. Why? Because he saw God's face. In the angel of the Lord, by the way. Hmm. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Go back there to the Old Testament. I'll tell you, one of the most amazing studies that you can get into is when you give up this Trinitarian, pagan, satanic garbage and you finally start to say, you know what? Yeah, I understand 
Jesus Christ and the Father, they're one and the same being. They're the same person. That's what the Bible teaches. Okay, there's no such thing as different persons within the Godhead. And you start to realize, wow, just who Jesus Christ is. You know, you give up the Trinity and you'll get to know Jesus. We'll talk more about that later. But let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 32. There's some really interesting things. If you study the time of Jacob's trouble, it's coming. There's a lot of things that the Lord does again that he did back in the book of Exodus. Israel, you know, Jerusalem is called, you know, Sodom and Egypt. And, and you have Moses coming back with Elijah and there. And a lot of the things, he's, you know, water's turning into blood. There's hail. There's, you know, a lot of the things. Very interesting study. I want to show you some really interesting stuff here. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Verse 15 through 18. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Is modern day Israel fat in terms of their, uh, not just gluttony wise, you know, eating junk food, and whatever? I'm sure that there's plenty of that there. But uh, are they very wealthy? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And what does it lead to? Then he forsook God, which made him. Have they forsaken God? Yeah. And lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. Who is the rock according to the New Testament? According to Jesus Christ. What he says in Matthew chapter 16, I think it is. Jesus is the rock of our salvation. They lightly esteemed the rock. Why? God hid his face from them because they turned against him. They served other gods. You understand? So God hides his face. Who is the faith, face of God the Father? Jesus Christ. Verse 16. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils. Here we see it. To gods whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up whom your fathers feared not. Hmm. We're going to go to a, a verse of Scripture back here. Well, we'll, we'll continue here, but we're going, to, we're going to look up something that's very interesting here. Um, verse 18. Of the rock that begot thee, thou art, that begat thee, thou art unmindful. They don't think about Jesus Christ. And hast forgotten God that formed thee. Notice the similarity there, by the way. The rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. It's the same work going on there. Hmm. But uh, let's go to let's keep reading here. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 19 through 25. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. You see it there again. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. How's that for modern day Israel? They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They, provo they have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will pro provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. For a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. What happens in the time of Jacob's trouble? In the book of Revelation. A third of the trees is burned up, and all green grass is burned up. Is there major fire going on in the time of Jacob's trouble? Yeah, absolutely. Um, verse 23, I will heap mischiefs upon them, I will spend mine arrows upon them. Time of Jacob's trouble? They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. Absolutely, that's what's going to happen. The time of Jacob's trouble. There's so many references there. You could do a whole study just on that. Verse 25, the sword without. God removes peace from the earth. The Antichrist comes and he, you know, he's going out and he's conquering and to conquer. The sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of gray hairs. 
Compare that to Matthew chapter 24. Woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. I mean, there's just so many tie-ins there. The time of Jacob's trouble comes because those Jews have forsaken the Lord. And God has hid his face, the face of Jesus Christ, from the Jewish people. Rather interesting. I flip my page over here. Go down to verse 31. For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is the vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall, their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. Um, is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up, up among my treasures? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. Time of Jacob's trouble. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants, when he seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods? Their rock in whom they trusted. Their rock. Interesting. Peter uh, according to Roman Catholic theology, Peter is the rock that Jesus said, I'm going to build my church upon, uh, you know, upon this rock. Will I build my church? The Catholics say it's Peter. And what do we understand about the future? The Antichrist comes in Daniel chapter 9 and he confirms a covenant with that nation of Israel. And I firmly believe that. I teach that, that it's the Catholics that confirm a covenant with the Jews. And the, the little carrot on the end of the stick for the Jews is the, the Jews give up the city of, of Jerusalem, so that the Catholics can rebuild on their Fort Antonia there. It's not the Wailing Wall. It's not the, you know, that Wailing Wall thing. It's not the temple that was there. You know, that's not it. It's a Roman Catholic fort. Okay? The, the Catholics get to rebuild their temple there. In exchange, the Jews say, okay, we'll give you that land. We'll grant this whole thing. Zionism and Catholic fascism will join together, and they will say, all right, what do we get? Their Catholic Church. And the Catholics will say, we're going to make a crusade and destroy Islam from off the earth. And a few other movements as well. And uh, the Jews are going to say, oh, oh boy, okay. They're going to confirm that covenant. That will be their rock, in other words. Verse 38. Which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings, let them rise up and help you and be your protection. Interesting there. Which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings? Did you know that the Antichrist is eventually going to cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease? And he's going to sit himself up in the temple to be worshipped as God? You see? And the false prophet and the dragon... And I don't know what the order is going to be. I personally think God the Father in that satanic trinity that's coming is going to be the false prophet. God the Son will be the Antichrist. God the Holy Spirit will be the dragon. I could be wrong. I don't know. Um, Clarence Larkin and Ruckman say different things and whatever. I don't think we can really fully know. Uh, that's a mystery that will be revealed later on. But there is coming that satanic trinity. There's no question about that. And that rock that's there, their false Christ is going to take over the sacrifices. And he's going to drink of their sacrifices. Just like the Bible prophesies right there. Verse 30, 39. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. God the Father, there is no God with me. You say, well, you're rejecting that Jesus Christ is God. No, I'm not. I'm saying that he's the Father. And the Holy Spirit is also the Father. There's just one. There's only one God. Anytime you read of multiple plural gods, it's always a fake. It's always a devil. Uh, it says here, I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Interesting because in the New Testament you have the Father says, about no man can pluck them out of my hand. And Jesus says, no man can pluck them out of my hand. Okay? It's the same being. But you have a body, and then you have the soul inside of that body. So they can both have the same hand. 
That's why Jesus and the Father are both said that no man can pluck them out of my hand. Hmm. Unless you're a Trinitarian. Now, here's a point that I need to make. Okay? Um, modalism comes along and they say that there is no distinction. It's just all, you know, God in, in three different modes. When you see the Father, that's one mode. The Son is another mode. The Holy Spirit's another mode. I don't think so. Uh, I'm just going to draw a rough image here. You have, you know, I'll just draw uh, the body here like this. Looks more like a gingerbread man, I realize, but, you know, just try to prove my point here. The body there, and inside of that body is a soul. Like that. John, in the book of Revelation, chapter 6, he sees the souls under the altar and white robes are given to them. And they're speaking and saying how long, you know, till you basically judge and avenge our blood upon them that are on the earth. Right? Their bodies are down there on the earth, but their souls are in heaven speaking and they get white robes given to them. So, and then inside of the body is the, is the spirit. Yet, the breath of life, the spirit. Now, here's the point. The distinction between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is all right in one being. Okay? And here is the, the trick to understanding this whole thing, whatever you want to call it. Here's the, here's the whole point. With God, He is able to separate and have the body like this. I'm not going to even get close to trying to draw a man because I don't want to be making a graven image, but you have the body, you have the soul, like that, and you have the spirit. Okay? Three different distinct parts of one God. Okay? Body, Soul, spirit. Now here's the point. I believe firmly from Scripture, from studying this thing for many years, that God is the only one, He is the only being in the universe that is able to separate Himself. Body, soul, spirit. And these three can speak with one another. Okay? They can separate. Or they can come together as one. Alright? Just say it this way. One God. You understand? The Bible says that man is created in the image of God. Man has a body, a soul, and a spirit. There aren't three persons to me. There aren't three persons to you. Just one. But here's the difference. You say, well, then we are little gods or whatever else. No, we're not. No, we're not. Because we can't separate ourselves this way. The only thing that's going to get your soul out of your body and your spirit out of your body is when you die. All right? That's not under your control. When I mean, you commit suicide or something like that, well, your soul and your spirit go and your body's left there to be buried by whoever. But you can't willingly just separate your body, soul, and spirit. Neither can anybody else. So the only way that the devil can imitate God, because he wants to be God, the only way that he can imitate it is to add in other persons. Like here and here. You see? But those other persons that the devil adds in are actually other devils. And they come by other names and things like that. That's the difference here. All right? Modalism says it's just one God and he shifts modes. No, that's not correct. There's a body, a soul, and a spirit. These three are one. That's the difference here. But in order to counterfeit that thing, the devil can't split off like this. He doesn't have that ability. He doesn't control uh, nature. He is not the source of all life like God is. All right? Remember the Lord Jesus Christ? He said about he has power to lay down his life and to take it again. All right? Why? Because he's God. He can say, hey, I'm going to let the body be killed on the cross. But the soul and the spirit aren't going to die. He's God. He can do that. 
He gets up to heaven. He can say, hey, the body is going to be separate from the soul. I'm going to sit at the right hand of the Father until an enemies be made thy footstool. Then he becomes one. See, that's the thing that God can do that nobody else can do. God can separate his body, soul, and spirit. And so he says, let us make man in our image. Right there. Body, soul, spirit. That's what you see in the book of Genesis. He doesn't say, let's make us, let us make man in our image so that he looks identically to us and looks just like our face. No, make us in our image so man has three parts. But man cannot separate those three parts like God can. That's the difference. So the devil, when he has to counterfeit, he has to bring in other devils so he can have other persons. Okay, you got to get a hold of that thing. Next, we're going to go to Joshua chapter 23. Joshua chapter 23, verse 7. That ye come not among these nations, these that remain among you, neither make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them. Hmm. Notice uh, what it says there. Neither make mention of the name. Is that plural or singular? The name of their gods. Huh. You mean pagan nations have always done this practice of having a name, but it's more than one god? Name of their gods? You say, no, no come on. If it's just talking about gods and whatever else, it would say names of their gods. Plural, plural. Why does this text say name of their gods? Um, the Trinity thing isn't new. Okay. Ancient pagan cultures have continually had this practice of having just one name, but there's three gods. God, but there's three gods right there. Hmm. How about that? First Samuel, go to First Samuel chapter four. First Samuel chapter four, beginning in verse seven. And the Philistines were Philistines saved? No. Look what they say. And the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God, singular, is come unto, into the camp. And they said, Woe unto us, for there hath not been such a thing heretofore. Woe unto us, who shall deliver us out of the hand of these mighty gods? Plural. These are the gods that smote the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. You mean to tell me, and it's capital G, by the way, take notice to that. Are you reading in your King James Bible? I certainly hope so. So the Philistines, lost people say, God, there in verse 7, God has come into the camp. Verse 8, these mighty gods, these are the gods that smote the Egyptians. Gods, but they said God. Hmm. You wonder if that's the same spirit that's going on right here? There's just one God. They're all just one God, but there's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. There's no new thing under the sun. All has been done before. Are you reading your King James Bible? I would recommend getting right. I used to say Trinity stuff back in years ago because I was led away with the same philosophies. But you got to admit, you got to drop your pride and get to a point where you say, you know what? This isn't in Scripture. And in fact, it's condemned in Scripture. There is no God the Son or God the Holy Spirit. That's not there. There's only one God. Okay, I need to get right with God. God, <laughs> not gods. Drop your pride. You want to keep continuing on with this stuff? You're just convincing me you're lost. Why would you fight against these things? 
1 Samuel chapter 17. Go over there. It's the very core of Christianity. The Trinity teaching is the core of Christianity. Chapter and verse. We'll be doing another video on that in the future. Exposing some of the heretics that say that. 1 Samuel chapter 17 verses 40 through 45. Here you have David going against Goliath. Check this out. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in a scrip. And his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest? to me with staves, and the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine had more than one god. God in three persons. And check out what David says, verse 44. And the Philistine said to, to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou camest, comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Um, is that three? No. The Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel. One God. Just one. Just one. First Kings. Here's a real good one. First Kings chapter 11. First Kings chapter 11. Verses 1 through 8. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughters, the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods, their devils. Solomon clave unto these in love. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after, now count, Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did the evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, the Lord, singular, as did David his father. Then did Solomon build an high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Moloch, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. You say, wait a second. Your theory falls apart, Brian, because... You're talking about, you're cutting on the Trinity here, and there's four false gods that are mentioned. Okay? There's four. It's not a Trinity. It's not an ancient Trinity. Got you this time. Oh, uh, no, actually, you didn't. Um, notice what Ashtaroth is. Go back up to verse 5. Solomon went after Ashtaroth, Ashtoreth, there, the goddess of the Zidonians. goddess of the Zidonians. See if I can get it here. Here we have the Catechism of the Catholic Church, the official Roman Catholic Catechism. Page 233, number uh, 813, the sacred mystery of the Church's unity. The church is one because of her source. The high, highest exemplar and source of this mystery is the unity in the trinity of persons of one God, the Father, 
and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You say, what's that have to do with the four? Little quote down here. What an astonishing mystery. There is one Father of the universe, one Logos of the universe, and also one Holy Spirit everywhere, one and the same. There is also one virgin become mother, and I should like to call her church. St. Clement of Alexandria. Read it and weep, Trinitarian devils. There it is. Right there is the St. Clement of Alexandria. Right up here is the thing about the church's unity. Right there. In the catechism. And you get these people, I believe the King James Bible. I'm a King James Bible believer. Why are you quoting the catechism? Stinking heretics. The Catholics have a trinity that they worship that looks like this, but they throw Mary in there. Let's write that out for you because some of you are too slow to get things like this. Number four, you have Mary, the mother of God, also known as the Queen of Heaven. That'll be important here in a few minutes. So you see, the Catholics have a trinity, but they throw in a fourth. King Solomon's strange wives turn him his heart after other gods that were devils. Three, but the fourth is Ashtaroth. Ashtaroth there, Ashtaroth, whatever you say. She's a goddess. Mary's a goddess. They say, well, we don't worship her, we venerate her. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> sure, sure, whatever. 1 Kings chapter 18. Hang on to your seats, it's going to get worse. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21 through 28. Here you have Elijah with the priests of Baal, the uh, priests of the Trinity. Verse 21, And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. See, he's speaking of one. If you are truly of Israel, get it? One Lord, one God. There's no God beside him. But if you're of the devil stuff, then go up here and worship your God. Baal. And the people answered him not a word. They couldn't answer him. Like a lot of the Trinitarians can't answer the stuff I bring out. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Everybody's a Trinitarian. Everybody knows this stuff. Who's Denlinger? The Denlinger is just this little nobody. He lives up in northern Maine. He doesn't, you know, doesn't have a church of his own and blah, blah. Hi. <laughs> let them therefore give us two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood and put no fire under and I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under and call ye on the name of your gods. Wait a second. I thought he just said it was a god named Baal. Now he says it's gods? Hmm. And I will call on the name of the Lord. It's a good thing to do if you're saved, by the way. Call on the name of the Lord. That's actually how you get saved. A lot of heretics out there, Satanists, devils in the flesh, and they're saying you don't need to call on the name of the Lord to be saved. That's free. I'll just put that in there for free. And the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Um... And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock up for yourselves, and dress it first, for ye are many, and call on the, on the name of your gods. Get it? But put no fire under. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O oh, Baal, hear us! But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Go cry aloud, for he is a God. Huh? A God? But gods? 
Either he is taking or talking, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awaked. Our little Trinitarians. Oh, you don't have any scripture for what you say. Oh, well, that's just a shame. You know, why don't you go find your God wherever he is out on his travels? Maybe he went to Hawaii this year. You know, God the Son and God the Spirit aren't in the Bible, but that had to be invented kind of later on. I'm going to mock you just like Elijah did. Because you have no scripture for what you believe. Verse 28, And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. Exactly like a lot of Catholics do today. There are Catholics that flagellate themselves, that cut themselves. Oh, yeah. Well, you didn't show any proof. That's not the point of this study. You can look it up. Okay, do a little, little bit of your own research there, okay? I don't have to hold your hand through everything. <laughs> so these people. <clears throat> First Chronicles. Go to First Chronicles chapter 16. You shouldn't be getting so upset, Brian. You should just be smiling more. And, and you, you don't have any love in your preaching. Did Elijah have love in his? Elijah cut their heads off. I haven't cut anybody's head off. So Elijah was a man of God, but I'm not. Okay. <laughs> How that works, I don't know. First Chronicles chapter 16, verses 23 through 26. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Show forth from day to day his salvation. Declare his glory among the heathen, his marvelous works among the all nations. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods. Gods are devils. Always remember, plural gods, lowercase g, they're always devils. Do you fear devils? I don't fear the devils that are on this shirt here. This isn't God here on my shirt, the little picture that's X'd out here. This isn't God. There's no Trinity. I don't fear it. Oh, you better be careful. You better be careful what you say about the Trinity. I don't fear gods. I fear God, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God the Father. That's who I fear. Verse 26. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. Hmm. Turn next to Psalm 86. Psalm 86, verses 8 through 10. Among the gods there is not none like unto thee, O Lord. Neither are there any works like unto thy works. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee. Thee is a reference to a singular being. <clears throat> um, thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great and doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. Thou art God alone. No scripture. Scripture. Thou art God alone. God in three persons. Wrong. Body, soul, spirit making up one God. Distinction between body, soul, spirit, but one God. Thou art God alone. There are no gods. Understand that. This is blasphemy right here. Psalm 95. Psalm 95, verses 1 through 3. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Hmm. Israel forsook the rock of their salvation. Their rock is not as our rock. Very interesting. Same thing with the Catholics. Verse 2. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. Who controls the devils? These false gods? God does. He is a great God above all gods. Psalm 
Psalm 96. Psalm 96, verses 1 through 5. O sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless His name. Show forth His salvation from day to day. Declare His glory among the heathen, His wonders among all people. A lot of singular references there. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Hmm. Psalm 138, verse 2. Verses 1 and 2, excuse me. Psalm 138, <clears throat> verses 1 through 2. I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. Before the gods? I will sing praise unto thee. Just one. Can't be any more than one. But look at verse 2. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth, for thou hast magnified the Holy Trinity above anything. That's the core of the... Thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. What is the very core of the Christian faith? You're looking at it. God's holy written word magnified above his name. And you get these devils coming out and they're saying that the, the Trinity is the very core of our faith. Well, then you're lost. It's just as simple as that. This is more important than anything. You say more than, than salvation? Absolutely. What's salvation without this? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. What do you have without this book? You have nothing. The Trinity is the core of the faith, is it? Something that doesn't even appear in the Bible is the core of your faith. Then I suggest you repent of your self-righteous pride, and you have to come to the Lord broken. You need to be saved. If the Trinity is the core of your faith, you're lost. Next, let's go to Isaiah chapter 21, verse 9. Isaiah 21, verse 9. Twenty-one, verse nine, and behold, there cometh a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen, hmm, kind of like in the book of Revelation, chapter six. And he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, and all the graven images of her gods he hath broken unto the ground. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, and the images of her gods. Sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? Go back to Revelation 18. Actually, go to Revelation 14 first. We'll look at that one. Um, to find it here. This isn't my notes, but I remember seeing this. Uh, oh, that's I'm looking at the wrong one there. We'll go first to Revelation 14, chapter 14. Um, Revelation 14, verse 8, And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Great city is fallen. Hmm. Revelation 18, jump over there. Verse 1 and 2, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of... Devils. Wait a second. Back in Isaiah chapter 21, there it says gods. The images of their gods. Here it says they're devils. Do you think there's a tie-in? Gods, plural, are devils. Habitation of devils in the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Hmm. 
So Isaiah chapter 21 says gods. Revelation chapter 18 says devils. And they're connected with a city called Babylon. The city that is plainly Roman Catholicism. The, the Vatican City. Huh. The Vatican City that says that uh, the Trinity is the very core of their faith. How about that? Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 16 through 18. Therefore pray not for this, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. The Lord's really upset about this. What's he so upset about? Verse 17. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods, that they provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Hmm, how about that? So they pour out drink offerings to the queen of, or to, they make cakes to the queen of heaven there, uh, <clears throat> um, the, the <coughs> communion host, <coughs> excuse me, and they pour out drink offerings to other gods. You understand? Trinity. It's a false god. Isaiah chapter 21, the gods of the city of Babylon. Revelation chapter 18, the devils of the city of Babylon. Jeremiah 19. Go there next. Jeremiah 19, verse 13 through 15. And the houses of Jerusalem and the houses of the kings of Judah shall be defiled as the place of Tophet, because of all the houses upon whose roofs they have burned incense unto all the host of heaven, and have poured out drink offerings unto other gods, just like the Catholics do, then came Jeremiah from Tophet, whither the Lord had sent him to prophesy, and he stood in the court of the Lord's house and said to all the people, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the God of Israel, singular, Behold, I will bring upon this city and upon all her towns of the evil that I have pronounced against it, because they have hardened their necks, and they, that they might not hear my words. You know, the greatest argument against the whole Trinity thing is, it's not in Scripture. It's not there. And yet you'll harden your neck and you'll say, God in three persons. I'll be a Trinitarian. The Trinity is the core of our faith. I'm not giving it up. You're no different than those ancient Jewish people, those ancient Israelites that turned against God and went and worshipped other gods. You're no different. You're wicked. Jeremiah 44 if, if, I, if I agree with you know, what the Bible teaches, because it's not what I teach, if I agree with what the Bible teaches, I'll be at odds with all the churches out there and with my seminary that I went to, oh, my alma mater. Oh, you mean your queen of heaven? <clears throat> I mean, uh, virgin mother, uh, birth mother, the alma mater? Kind of weird. Yeah, you don't want to be at odds with that. I mean, better line up with your alma mater and with all the churches out there so you don't become an outcast. Little sissy, you. Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 15 through 19. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, in Pathros answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. Hello, Trinitarians. A lot of you aren't going to hearken unto what I'm saying. You're just going to go right on with your Trinitarian, pagan, satanic nonsense. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth. It's not in the Bible. We don't care. 
Okay, Trinity is not in the Bible. Three persons isn't in the Bible. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Not in the Bible, but we don't care. It's going to go out of our own mouth. It's not in the Bible, but we don't care. We're going to keep doing it. It's the same thing. Do you understand? To burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes, in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of victuals and were well and saw no evil. But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And when we burned incense to the Queen of Heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? How much changes? Now let's head to the New Testament. Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, verses 16 through 18. Okay. Now while, Paul, now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the, whole, the city wholly given to idolatry. What is idolatry? They're worshiping plural gods that are actually devils. That's idolatry. Verse 17. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him, and some said, What will this babbler say? Others some, he seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods. Philosophers looked at the Godhead and they said, That's a strange, strange gods. Why? Because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. He preaches about Jesus Christ and he says, you see, Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins. His soul, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? And he gave up the ghost. See? To somebody who say there's no problem, they say, okay, well, the body died, but the soul and spirit didn't. The soul was in heaven. The spirit there is in heaven and in Jesus Christ. The spirit there, same thing. These two leave, this one dies. And the philosophers say, in their lost pagan condition, they say, well, then it must be three gods. God in three persons. Blessed philosophy. That's what pagans think. This is what Christians think. One God. Three parts. Jesus dies on the cross. The soul, the Father, and the Holy Spirit does not. Simple. Man is created in the image of God. Man has a body, a soul, and a spirit. Why can't these people get this? Why do they cling so much to this false system over here? The same reason people did throughout time. They want to worship devils. That's why. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. First Corinthians chapter 8, verses 4 through 6. As concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, but there is none other God but one. Again. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many, you mean to tell me that they would say that there are gods, plural, in heaven? Oh, yeah. But to us, us, there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in Him. Are you in the Father? You say, well, I'm in Jesus Christ. I'm in Jesus Christ as well, but Jesus Christ is the Father. How do you know? Continue. And one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by Him. I can be in the Father and in Jesus Christ at the same time. Why? Because it's just one being. Pretty easy. But let's look at the Satanic Trinity now. 
thousands of years of recorded history in this King James Bible. Turn in your Bible to Revelation 13. Thousands and thousands of years of this system fighting and fighting and fighting. The Jews continually being deceived by the devil to go and worship other gods, which are in reality devils. Coming over here and saying, we're going to build a make a molten calf. These be thy gods, O Israel. Over and over and over again, the Jews being deceived by this thing. Three gods, but they're just one God. Over and over and over and over again. What's it leading up to? There's a future fulfillment for this thing. Written about in 1920. And again in 1960. And here we are in 2020. Revelation 13, verses 1 through 18. We're going to read the entire chapter. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. What did it say back there in the Old Testament? One of the scriptures we read earlier, that there's gods that are, they're going to worship gods in the future that are newly come up. Hmm. One of the things that's uh, in the Mark of the Beast book there, I'm not going to go to the page and read it there. I didn't mark it. But uh, there's actually a thing, I think it's in the, in the Zohar or whatever else, one of these satanic things that the Jews accept, you know, along with their Torah. All right, sorry about that. Battery died on the camera. But I'll, as I was saying, this thing of the Zohar, they actually teach that there's this Messiah that's down under the earth and he's going to come up. And what do we read here in Revelation 13? It says here, uh, and, I, and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, newly gods that come up. Having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Okay? And when the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Uh-oh, now there's a second one. Starts off with the beast, and then it's the dragon as well. Hmm. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Wait a second. They worshipped the dragon. They worshipped the beast. Who is like unto him? Who is able to make war with him? They're worshipping two different persons, and yet they say him. Verse 5, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. This is kind of blasphemous right here, isn't it? Yes, it is. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. But I thought there's two, the beast and the dragon, but they worship him. Very interesting. Whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. Newly gods which are come up. One comes up out of the sea. One comes down from heaven. You read about that in Revelation chapter 12. And one comes up out of the earth. Huh. Land, sea, and air. Almost like the armed forces, but we won't go there. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. No, 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 no. They're, they're, they're worshiping. There's three different ones there, and so they're each worshiping each of the... No. Even when the third, you know, false prophet there, when he shows up, the third one, they're worshiping him. We don't have three gods. We only have one god. One God composing of three separate persons. 
Do you see what the setup is? Do you see what these people are being set up for? And it's tied in with Babylon, and Babylon says it's the very core of our faith. I'll show that here in a little bit. Verse 13, And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. See that picture right there? Right there? With the red X behind the red X? This is one of the images of that trinity. But the Bible says don't make graven images. Mystery Babylon, the Roman Catholic Church, is already making images. Hmm. Which had the wound by a sword and did live. Verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and calls that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he calleth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Six, six, six. Let me say that again. Six, six, and I'm going to do that. Uh, this way, six. Three sixes. They look like this. Six, six, six. Right there in the Catholic Trinity. It's right there in front of your face. Hmm. Revelation 16. Verses 13 through 14. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Huh. There's three. And they have the spirits of devils within them. Rather interesting. Revelation chapter 19, verses 19 through 21. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Against Jesus Christ, in other words. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both, two of them, were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Got to read that part because of their destruction. But two of them are taken. Two of them are taken. You say, what about the third one? The third member of the Holy uh, Trinity there. Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast in the lake of fire where the beast and the false prophet are. Or however it works out. Isn't that special? They're reunited for all of eternity. And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And you read about the mark of the beast. Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 11. Anybody takes that mark, worships the beast or his image. Interesting, there's three things there. They get God's wrath forever, forever and ever and ever. Old Testament, you worship other gods. You reject me as your God, singular. You worship other gods and you're to be killed. God doesn't like being called other gods. One other place to turn to. I gotta hurry here, my battery's about dead. I mean, you know, this this issue has been hammered out, you know, among the body of Christ and among the, the heretics out there. And you know, 
I just don't understand how people can still cling to this Trinity thing. You know, I mean, they're lost. I get it. There's, there's those that are lost, but you get the people and they say that they're saved and they, they just will not let go of the Trinity. There's a major problem there. There's devils there. Matthew chapter 11, verse 27. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, Jesus, the Father. And no man knoweth the Son, but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Philip, his disciple, comes to him and he says, Jesus, show us the Father. And he says, Yet have I been so long time with you, Philip, and yet hast thou not known me? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. They're the same being. There's distinction. It's not modalism. It's not Jesus, you know, Jesus God here on earth, Jesus the Father in heaven. No, 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 no. There's distinction. Body, soul, spirit. Three in one. God is the only one that can do this. That's why the devil has to counterfeit him with devils. I said I'm going to show you the thing here of the Trinity. And I will do that real quickly if I can find it here before my battery dies. The heart, the Holy Trinity is the, okay, is that the one? Okay. Page 69, number 234 in the Roman Catholic Catechism. The mystery of the Holy Trinity is the central mystery of Christian faith and life. It is the mystery of God in himself. It is therefore the source of all the mysteries of faith, the light that enlightens them. Roman Catholic Catechism. Read it right there in front of your face. Okay? The Trinity is the heart of Roman Catholic belief. The Holy Trinity and the teaching of the faith, the formation of the Trinitarian dogma. From the beginning, the revealed truth of the Holy Trinity has been at the very root of the church's living faith, principally by means of baptism. The Roman Catholic Church, if you say we believe in baptism by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, then you are not considered a heretical sect, just simply separated from Roman Catholicism. But it goes down here, verse 251, or, excuse, verse 251. Number 251, in order to articulate the dogma of the Trinity, the church had to develop its own terminology with the help of certain notions of philosophical origin. Right there. Read it. There it is. There is no Trinity. Okay? in terms of what the Bible teaches. God is not a trinity. That trinity teaching is very, very old, thousands of years old. The children of Israel have struggled with that thing down through the centuries, and it's going to be there in the future. There will be a satanic trinity coming up in the future that will be called the Holy Trinity. Remember, he sits in the temple showing himself that he is God. How can he do that? What's the proof that he's going to have to do? Well, you see, God can manifest himself in three separate parts of one body. So the devil, the only way he can imitate that is to have three separate gods, three separate persons. That's what the satanic trinity is. That's why it is so central and important to Mystery Babylon. Mystery Babylon that in Isaiah chapter 21 has gods false gods, images of their false gods. Revelation 18, false devils, images of devils. It all ties together. 666, the Trinity symbol. Hey, we have a calf. These be thy gods, Israel. One, but they're composed of three. Hey, King Solomon, how about three gods? and a goddess to go along with it. Hey, Catholic Trinitarians, how about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and Mary, the Mother of God, the Queen of Heaven? Nothing's changed, only the names. That's all that's changed down through the centuries. God still hates this system right here. God still hates this. This is an abomination to God. This right here is what God is, who God is. And if you refuse to submit to what the Bible teaches plainly right here, you are lost and on your way to hell. 
I can tell you that right now. You better fear this stuff. I mean, in the Old Testament, you'd be put to death if you came out of this junk over here. In the future, you will go to hell if you come out with this stuff here. You worship the satanic trinity, you're going to hell. Don't go, oh, saved by faith alone and whatever else. Nobody's ever been saved by faith alone. Give me a break. Grace through faith today. In the future, faith and works. And part of the works that you have to do is keeping the commands of God in the faith of Jesus. Revelation 14, verse 12. Read it. And part of it is, you can't fall for this stuff over here. These things that would put you to death in the Old Testament. These things will damn you to hell. There's a lot of deception out there on this issue. You better get away from it. Let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I do pray for these people out there that are bound up in this Trinitarian philosophy, if there are any that are still saved after hearing all this, uh, after all this uh, arguments back and forth and whatever else between Trinitarians and Bible believers. Uh, I pray, Lord, that they would get out of that wicked, wicked system. And uh, Lord, those people that, that cling to this Trinity teaching, I pray that your judgment would hit them, Lord, as I know it will in the future especially. And... Um, I just pray, Lord, that your people would be separated from the, the lost. And um, I just pray that you would help us all to stand by your word. And I ask it in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.